All right, what is going on everyone and welcome back to another Black Desert video. My name is John and today we're going to be talking about the best spots for grinding with Agris. Now, recently I've made videos for the best spots for XP, uh, just silver in general. But this time we're going to be talking about with Agris because, you know, some spots are actually just significantly better uh, with it. That would be like a normally, let's say a grind spot would be a B or C tier. And then with Agris, it's just suddenly an s tier so i think this is going to be important to update because recently they've added or made a change into patch notes where some grind spots where the enemies just respawn faster so i think this is a good time to make an update because uh obviously spots got buffed and everything so anyway what we're going to be doing is the usual we're going to be looking at it like this and we're going to go down the list of AP orders because uh, I think that's just easier to talk about and and I'll give you my highlights of every region at the end so how about that so I'm going to assume we're all going to start at the same pace of let's say you are mid to end game of seasons which means your AP is probably around the uh, 190 to 240 area and then we'll talk about all the other spots afterwards all right cool and then I'll also talk about the Elvia ones as well, because those are some of them have like base and then Elvia spots. So starting with. Uh, let's see. I guess we'll start with the 100 AP area, just because this is basically entry level and everyone can do it. So some spots that are good for grinding aren't good for Agris or with Agris, just because it eats up a lot of them. But yeah, we'll talk about that as we get to it. So all of these spots over here, down in Valencia, in my opinion, the 100 AP area, I would personally recommend just not using it there. But let me just make this clear at the very beginning. As long as you are not over capping your Agris, then ultimately just use it wherever you want. But I think if you're trying to min max, some spots are better than the others. Also, just in case you didn't know, or if you don't know how to get Agris in general, you do the... I don't remember which journal it was, but I think it was like one of these old moon or something. And what they do is they give you... You start at 20,000, right? And then you do a bunch of quests, and then you go up to 100,000, like the total pool. And then after that, it increases your item drop amount by 150, as you guys have seen a tooltip. Now, I believe that actually is different. So, like, let's say you only have 40,000 total. Your item drop rate is not at 150. So, you really do want to max it out as soon as possible just to get the maximum value of your uh, aggress points. So, I think that's very important. So, just in case you didn't know, that is what we are at. So, in my opinion, the Valencia spots are not really um, worthwhile. Well, some of them are, actually. We'll talk about that. But not really worth it because these spots in general are high density, which means there are a lot of enemies that you'll be going around in their circle. And so that means you'll run out of aggress faster and the trash loot itself is what we're looking at is... I mean, it, it's okay. They buffed Valencia over the past year, but at the same time, it doesn't really feel like it got buffed. So I'm going to talk about the spots I think are worthwhile in, in my top three. So after that, um, like these spots are good to grind in general, but maybe not with Agris. Soldier's Grave or Soldier's Cemetery. It's okay, especially if you're going to grind there for skill points in general. But the trash loot is mostly not trash loot. You're just getting a bunch of exchangeables in here, so it's not worth it. But it's a good spot overall. Uh... Fattest. This one is actually a high density spot to the point where I think it's okay to use Agris here. The trash loot is such a weird number, like 96, 71. Like, who comes up with that? But overall, decent spot up until a point. And to give you an idea of the spot in general, uh, this is a good place to grind from, like, I think the 50s all the way up to 58. And then after that, the XP uh, just drops off. So then it's not so good. Tashira Ruins, not a good spot for it at all. You're here for the infinite potion piece, and the trash loot's kind of worthless. So, let's see. 
We are... A lot of these lower spots aren't really worth much, but I think Gahaz Bandits is definitely an exception. And this used to be a good spot to grind back in the day. This has a lot of density and was pretty decent XP as well as long as silver. So this is definitely an aggro spot. You can see by the tag of it. And I think it's very good. So even many years ago, I thought it was a good spot. Next, we have Polly's Forest. Um, I think this one is okay for aggro. It's not the best, but... Like, if you're going to be grinding here, this is a very good spot in general. So if you're there and you have no idea what else to use it on, I think it's fine to use it over here. So that's good. Uh, Blood Wolves actually got changed a little bit. So it's not so much the trash per hour here, but this is a good spot because, as you guys know, the new crystals with the Land of the Morning Light came out. And making these Cagdanucks worth like 200 mil each if you know how to, like, use the thing and craft it into the new crystal and then of course you're here for the infinite health potion so at some point you're just going to be here and trash loot not so great high density area but you're here for other things so if you're grinding here in general is it worth it probably not oh boy centaurs as we all know centaurs is probably one of the most busted spots for newer players and people with agris so I've seen people make like one bill an hour here just because let's say you're without aggress, you get like 10 trash loot per kill, right? With the aggress on, you're getting 150% more of that, which is actually kind of wild. So this has a very high uh, amount you get per kill along with it being worth a lot, which is why Centaurs is considered one of the top areas for silver, especially for newer players getting up from like 700 to 1 bill plus an hour. And so this is probably definitely, actually definitely in the top five of should you use Agris? Absolutely at this spot. So it's a low requirement in terms of gear score and you just get so much silver. It's actually comparable to like very high end spots too. I have tested it as well at Sherikin during the daytime. Is it really worth it? It kind of uses a lot. And when I compare, like, should you use Agris? So as you guys know, you get about 20,000 points a day. And how long will that 20,000 points last you in one hour of a grind? So Sherikin kind of uses a lot, but is it worth it there? Because the trash loot is one of those things where it multiplies it by a lot for the amount of grind you do. So I think... Sherikin is actually one of the ones that I would consider using there. I have some videos of me making like, I don't know, six, seven hundred mil an hour at Sherikin's during the video. So you can see a video and I think it's, I, I think it's worth it. Navern Step. Uh, I don't really think this is a good spot to grind because there's a lot of like open area and it's not like a tight knit rotation. So I heard this is the one that got changed with the patch in terms of uh, respawn rate and which ultimately helps with the Voltara piece if you're doing the gathering as well but overall can I recommend Navern Step in terms of using Agris probably not I don't think it's really worth it the most money you get comes from the Leopards and those aren't like in the main rotation you're mostly going to be getting beaks and other things as well so is it good? It might be, but not really. I haven't tested these spots in Sulphur and Pilaku Jail, but I do plan on trying it eventually because I am going to be going for the Archaeologist map in the future. So I'll let you know. But overall, these are decent spots, especially if you're going for the Archaeologist map. And yeah, you'll probably be grinding there at some point or another. Sakraya upper upper area. So this one is a weird spot because you don't use loot scrolls here, but you are here because of multiple things. One, the rich merchant ring. Two, it's because if you just like underwater grind spots, this is a decent one to be. So I think this is a good spot for money as well, but it's one of those weird things where you, because you don't use a loot scroll and the aggress is a little off, I think it's a little bit wonky. 
so down in, we're getting into the like mid 200s 240 ap area okay so personally would i use agris in most lvs spots the answer is probably no because there's just a high density and you're mostly focusing on various items more than like the trash loot there but i will say that there are some spots that are in elvia that i think are worth using but these aren't mirror mock ruins it's more for xp and not really so much for the silver an hour so it's a very good spot definitely in the a tier but just not for agris or with agris ronaros and monchums these are both the infinite potion pieces and in the 240 areas i have used agris in both of these i think it's okay it kind of uses a little bit more but it's not the worst thing you could use it on so i think it's just above average uh thornwood not a good one to use it that just uses a lot so now into 250 area we're looking at history and Achman. As you guys know, I recently finished up my compass piece. It took me over 600 hours over the past year and a half of grinding. And getting these compass pieces has been a struggle. And I have definitely used Agris at Histria. I think it is up there in one of the top five of value in terms of your Agris points to silver and trash loot. So I do think Histria is a very good spot. You average around like 700 to 1 bill an hour 700 mil to 1 bill an hour at Histria if you know how to do the rotation properly and of course you're going for um a lot of the other items and in my experience you do get a lot of red and black shards the Tungrad necklaces actually drop pretty frequently maybe you get like one to three an hour so that's pretty decent and then of course you get the scroll of written languages which are a very wanted i guess you can say because they turn into memory fragments and then that's just used universally for enhancing so history and Achman definitely very good spots to be using agrison in my opinion and it even notes that as well so i guess this is if you click it these tell you like if you click the hashtags it tells you what are they good for and I would agree with most of these spots, but let's just go back down into the AP and I'll just go over my opinions and then we'll talk about the uh, recommended ones, in my opinion. So. Where were we? Kratuga. Very good spot for Agris as well as it's tagged. So I've told you guys many times on my thoughts and opinions of this spot this is a very good silver spot in general so adding agris to it just like duplicate your money and definitely if you're going for artifacts this is the place to be so up there in the top five as well star zen sounds like it's a good idea for using trash loot but let's be honest you're there for the distos and if you don't get a disto an hour it just feels really awful so i don't think it like I don't think it's worth using because I'd rather use it at like centaurs where you get more value than stars and Sakraya underwater with Agris. Um I don't think it's the worst spot. Maybe like the mid-tier if you're gonna use it there. Because it drains a lot of Agris points and there's a lot of enemies in the area. So it's like you're using maybe around sixty thousand an hour, assuming you have like full maxed out at a hundred thousand. It's not the greatest spot, but I don't think it's the worst one because you do get a lot of trash loot an hour and it's worth it here. So just mid-tier in my opinion. Not the greatest, not the worst. Uh, Sano got buffed, but it's still not really that good. Turos. I actually haven't tested this in probably about a year just because after I got my flame for my Fallen God armor, there's just no reason to be back. And plus, it requires a party of two, and it's just like... Getting people to want to grind Turos with you is probably one of the harder parts of this. But getting the Turo belt is definitely worth it, and apparently it's tagged as uh, relevant with it. So, probably is worth it. Upper Gyphon, top five of aggro spots, and it's just overall a good spot. Ever since they made the buff about a year ago, 
Upper Gyphon is just good for everything. So in my opinion, yeah, worth it. Uh, Paddock's Island. It tags it as good for Agris, but it really, like, you can make more silver elsewhere because, first of all, getting to Paddock's Island is a huge pain. Like, not only do you have to have a boat to get yourself to Paddock's, the reason why you're there is because you want the Rich Merchant Ring, which is an endgame relic item, kind of like the compass or the infinite potions, the archaeologist map and everything. So... I have tested it. Even with Agris, it's like, what, more than 500 mil an hour and the time to take Sue to, to get to this island. So is it really worth it? Not really, in my opinion. I would rather, once again, grind at like centaurs or something if you get to that point. Okay, so next we are at... um, Where is it? Mirror Wax Labyrinth and Jade Starlight Forest. These are the land of the, not land of the morning light. Mountain of Eternal Winter Spot. Jade Starlight Forest is probably like up there in the spots for Agris because I have tested it and let's say you make about like 20,000 trash loot an hour. With Agris here, it literally just doubles it. So it's like in terms of value, very high up there and in the worth it value. So yeah. Definitely important, in my opinion. Um, Bloody Monastery and Elvia Oryx into 280. So these are not good for Agris, but they are very good spots to grind in general for silver. So if you are in the area and you're just like, huh, I'm out of Agris, where do I grind? These are very good spots, just not for Agris, because it uses a lot per enemy. So it's not what you want to be doing. Um... In the 300 area, we're talking about Hex and Giants and Olins and everything. Hex is a very good spot for silver without Agris. You could use it there. It just kind of uses about like 60,000 an hour, maybe more if you grind faster. But overall, this is a very solid spot. Just not for Agris. Olins. Um, it's tagged as Agris, and I think so, but when people say you use Agris here, you're really using Agris on the big golems that drop the, like, high tier, like, items. So, it is good, but it's, like, one of those things you have to toggle on and off for the big drops, and I think it's, like, definitely something you have to actively manage, but I don't think it's a bad choice. Ash Forest. This place sucks. Once the Lantern comes out in the next few weeks for high-end grind spots, hopefully it gets better. But realistically, if you grind an Ash Forest, you know why you're there. The Debereka or the Leaves for your Orzeka. Other than that, XP sucks. Trash loot sucks. Everything sucks there. If you get the Debereka an hour, you're doing great. If you don't, it feels bad. Underground Gyphon. Um, so I get about like... Uh, it depends on spawn RNG, but between 13 to 15,000 trash loot an hour, no aggress. And honestly, most of the silver you get here comes from the drops. You get a lot of Capra stones. You get a lot of dust and everything. Sometimes you get accessory drops. But the trash loot an hour here is not so great, but the spot itself is pretty decent. These two, Crypt of Resting Thoughts and Quintil. Uh, not good for Agris. You're here exclusively for Deborekas and or Distos and just like everything over here. I think this one, Quint Hill might be okay with Agris, but I'm not really too sure because here's the bad side about grinding here. It's a lot of money, but it's so slow. And um, so you guys know how BDO is like a fast paced game in terms of uh, like, you go from pack to pack really fast. PvP is high action, everything. This one is you're spending, like, 15, 20 seconds per enemy. And you get, like, one or two trash loot. And so, Agris itself is, like, not so great here. And, I don't know. It's just one of the slow spots. I don't really like it, but it is good silver. So, that's all the spots that we had. Here's one thing I wanted to talk about in um, the Agris tab. And so these are the ones recommended by the game for uh, using Agris. And let me give you my top five of what I have personally tested and what I think is good. So Jade Starlight Forest, definitely 
up there. I don't know if I'd rate it number one. I think I would rate Centaur as number one for aggro spot. Followed by Jade Starlight Forest at number two. Uh, Kratuga at number three. Uh, Histria at four. And probably Gyphon and five. Not to say that the rest of them aren't bad. I just think from my experience, I do better at those spots than the other ones. And so hopefully this helped you. And if you guys want to watch my other video of best spots to grind for silver, I would definitely recommend watching that one because um, some of the spots I recommended here are good with Agris, but some of the other spots I made in the other video are just good in general. So let's say you run out of Agris for today and you want to grind somewhere else. Um, check that video out because I think it's important for um, both with and without. So no matter what you're looking for, I have a video on it probably of are you looking for XP? Are you looking for a straight silver and or silver with Agris? And now that we have finished those, I thought it was a good time to update. So Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Once again, thanks so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Love to see you guys come back. I make videos for new players, returning players, and people who are just looking to get better at the game in general. And for the rest of the month and a little bit after in August, I do have a code on the channel. So if you're looking to start out the game, upgrade your package from like the base game to the like Conquerors, Legendary, whatever they call it, I get a small portion of that. As well as if you are planning on buying any A coins or pearls, which is the equivalent, I uh, use my code John Law. It's not case sensitive, and I get a small commission for whatever package you buy, and I would really appreciate it. So, once again, also, even if you don't spend any money on this game and you plan on playing it free to play, uh, that's okay with me. I just hope my videos are educational and informative. So, yeah, it just helps me out if you use it, but if not, no big deal. I just hope that you guys learn something. So, with that said, that's all I wanted to talk about today. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow and would love to see you come back. Peace.